Fuck. This is on sannyasi renunciates on this path, a.k.a. monks and nuns. What is required? One thing to remember, no matter what type of religious order one enters, the vows are standard. What are these vows? Poverty. The first is the vow of poverty. Well, it doesn't mean that one has to starve. It doesn't mean they have to give everything away as one is worthy of their hire, okay? It does mean that money is not one's personal possession and not the goal of one's life. Money is to be used wisely for the goal of furthering one's own journey and to be able to bring a way for others to come out of suffering as well. One's mindset is on the goal of realization and not the next object to be collected, okay? Number two is chastity. Celibacy is mandatory for sannyasi renunciates to be chaste in action, thought, and intention. Chastity is also modesty, okay? So chastity is not just not having sex, it means being chaste in all things, okay? Guruji, would you define chaste? Chaste, would I define chaste? Chaste in action, thought, and intention, okay? Which, which means to do it the sacred way, okay? Just sees chaste as sacred, okay? That, that's kind of an easy way to look at it, to think of it, to be chaste, to have a sacredness about what you do, okay? Obedience. Oh, this is the big one. Okay? <laughs> Obey is such a hard word for egos to hear. But the path is not about getting a recommendation or a suggestion. Okay? That is for seekers out in the world. Sannyas is about obedience as this is in place to wear away the egoic mind and all its wayward wanderings. Obedience is not easy. It's entering into a firestorm and facing the burning head on. So what burns? Ego flares up when it's being tested and it will want to either A, fight back or B, run away. Be being a sannyasi is about doing neither A or B. For if A or B are put into action, fighting back or running away, then gold is not found. But simply more fool's gold is kept and ego remains on its throne of me ship. And I think that Valina can tell you a little bit about this. You've taken vows. Valina used to be a nun. She can tell you that it's there to weigh away ego. It's not there you're not going to go and become a nun and tell Mother Superior, well, I, I feel like sleeping in today and I don't feel like doing this. <laughs> Is that true or not true? <laughs> so I'll let Felina have the floor for just a minute to, to just say a little bit about what vows are and, and how serious would they take it in, in other religious and persuasions and what it means to take those vows. Well, my experience was pretty much what you're explaining. Mm -hmm. um, and, and probably the biggest one is the, the obedience because of ego. Yeah. It's a tough one. It's a tough one for people. So it's not just obedience, well, I'll listen to the practices and do that, and that's it, you know, and then I'll put the rest of my life how I want to live it. That's not always it. You know, uh, but being obedient doesn't mean you're that you're. You know, the gurus are going to be a slave driver to you. You know, what was given is given there to break through ego, so that one can transcend that and go beyond it. Okay, so to be a sannyasi is to die to the world. Its charms are no longer chased nor entertained. One depends fully on God's grace. There is no voice raised against what the universe brings. 
as it is a test wearing away an opportunity for surrender and to say most aptly, not my will, but thine be done, O Lord. Now, if the people are looking to be served rather than to serve, then it's best not to take sannyas. Okay. At every turn, one will be continually challenged, if not by guru, then by the universe directly. As sannyas is entering into a binding ceremony to fully step into the path of no return. Okay? It means that you're dedicating to go fully to realization. Okay? You're not looking to get kudos in the world. Okay. So think hard and look within. As once sannyas is taken, one may try to run away, but God will then have you firmly in a grip. <laughs> and there is nowhere to run where God cannot find you and the conscience will know that there is no escaping this vow in one way or another <laughs> okay. people have some mistaken notion as to why gurus are served by the sadhakas it isn't for the guru's benefit it's for the benefit of the sadhaka to wear away the edges of egoic endeavor. For gurus who give and allow this to take place, it is a tapasha and an ongoing austerity in their lives when none need be done. As it is much easier for one that's completed the journey to simply wander without care and without burden. <coughs> but that's not sannyas in this path. Okay. Sannyasis on this path work. Okay, they give back to society. So that's very important. Some people think I'll take sannyas and then I'll just wander and I don't have to have any kind of uh, commitment anywhere. But sannyas is more of a commitment, not less of a commitment. Okay, it's a commitment to the path, it's a commitment to yourself, it's a commitment to society. It's a commitment all the way around, okay? So if you're not ready to have that type of commitment, don't take sannyas, <coughs> okay? If you want to go play, go play, but don't take sannyas. <coughs> Ramana stopped talking after a short time as argument and seekers' dramas do nothing to further them on the path. It takes silent surrender to allow the mind to still as every word is a stirring up and a fanning the flame of egoic desire. There are two types of flames. One, egoic desire and runaway mind. And number two, the flame of surrender. The only flame that burns away the dross is that of surrender and allowing the runaway mind to be put to ashes. Okay, so it's not engaging the runaway mind, no, no matter how juicy it may seem at the time. Okay, so when the mind wants to run away, you bite the tongue when you've taken sannyas, okay, because you have the vow of obedience. Okay, very important. If a monastic breaks his or her root vows, it causes a very negative karma, which is extremely difficult to purify in this life. These are not my words. I didn't make this up. <laughs> this comes out of any Buddhist, any Hindu tradition, you will find this. Okay, this is what is stated. So people don't think I'm cursing you, it's not a curse, you know. <laughs> it's, it's the caution that we give people. We, when you take the vow, you need to take it seriously, okay? Thus a person considering ordination should be aware that it's a serious commitment which lasts one's whole life. It's inappropriate to take monastic ordination wishing just to try it for a few years, okay? This is for life. Sannyas is for life. And like I said, if, if, you know, a couple wants to take it, that's fine, but they have to understand that they are under the vows of celibacy. Okay, just as much as any other sannyas. Okay, 
doesn't mean that you couldn't live together and you couldn't aid each other in that journey. That would be possible. But it would be like living in the renunciate house. Okay, it's the same thing. You have renunciates to stay there. You aid and help each other, but there's no monkey business. 